Okay. So for accounts receivable, our objectives, our focus points is to discuss basic, basic concepts for uh, accounts receivable. Then afterwards, we proceed with the, uh, discussing uh, accounting for credit sale, which is the re, uh, sales transaction that relates more for accounts receivable. Then we have to solve sample problems as we go along with our discussion. Let's start with accounts receivable, the basic concepts. Um, let us answer what is an accounts receivable. Uh, in the previous meeting, we have answered the question, what is a receivable? And we have associated a, a receivable to simply mean as collectibles. Okay? Uh, we also have defined receivable as financial asset, uh, which provides us the right um, to collect cash in the future. Now the question is very specific. We are being asked about accounts receivable. So we are being asked what is an accounts receivable. Now our answer may be patterned with what we have defined under uh, the overview of receivables, but uh, we must be more specific now with uh, defining uh, an accounts receivable. So for accounts receivable, we define it as uh, still a financial asset, but it is a financial asset that arising from open credit transactions with customers. Okay? It is either in the form of sale of goods or the render of services. Sale of services or the rendering of services. Now, if, if we're going to go back with our discussion with the overview, I have mentioned on the two types of contract. Okay? It could either oral or written contract. Uh, with regards to accounts receivable, what is provided in our definition is an open credit transaction or an open credit contract. Contract at least involve two parties, okay? the obligor and the obligee. Now, in accounts receivable, uh, as I have told you in our focus points, that our accounts receivable is much related with the credit sale. Now, credit sale or sale on account is actually uh, an in an open credit transaction or contract with customer. If we're going to uh, define or explain what that uh, what does it mean by open credit transaction, uh, in layman, we can say that is it is somewhat like a word of mouth. Although it, uh, it, uh, it, it applies in accounting, but that not much. Because open credit, when we say open credit, no um, strong evidence or let us say ano ba? Uh, security that will prove that we have a receivable from that customer. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng open credit. It's like uh, an agreement without any writings. Yun yung accounts receivable. Okay? So yan. Open credit transaction with customers uh, in the form of sale of goods or services. Kung baga, if you are familiar with transactions with Sari Sari store, Yun, yung umuutang lang talaga. Diba? Sometimes, um, customers are going to your store, presenting you with a good for statement or yung vale, yung mabali sa inyo. Kung sino may yung sari-sari store, I, I hope you can relate with what I'm saying. Because meron kaming store dati. Okay, so yun. Diba, si customer pupunta lang sa store mo to utang. You are actually recognizing or accept, if you accept the good for or yung asking the credit by the customer, you are extending credit through the, uh, with regards to the sale of goods or services. Meaning, you are allowing the customer to purchase what, uh, whatever the customer wants to purchase even without full amount of cash at the moment of transaction. So, Either be, either be may cash siya pero kulang, saka yung portion, yun yung i-credit or gagawing utang. Or maybe the entire amount ng mga binili will be in utang. That is open credit transaction. Okay? Nagagets ako guys. Kindly raise hand.
Okay. So, uh, in relation to accounts receivable being uh, arising from an open credit an open credit transaction, accepting that kind of transaction actually um, provides us the risk or put us in the risk of collecting those receivable, especially the accounts receivable. Reason uh, because we don't have strong evidence or security uh, that will provide us a proof that we have a receivable from that customer. In fact, yung sa sari sari store, if you uh, if an if a customer uh, ask credit umutang, even though you have even though you have the good for statement, the customer can still ano can still deny, di ba? Can still deny na meron silang silang utang sa you. Uh, a good example of that scenario is when the customer, despite having already the the ability to buy through cash, yung ginagawa, sa'yo umuutang, sa tindahan mo umuutang, pero sa kakompetensya mo bumibili. Nakaka-relate. Sa so, may mga store dyan, nakaka-relate. Di ba minsan, umuutang yung, umuutang yung customer sa inyo, tapos pag merong pambili, hindi bumibili sa store mo, nandun sa ibang store. Yun yung risk with accounts receivable. Oh, sabi ni uh, Sandra, Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So, relate na relate siya dyan. O, oh, diba? O, oh, yes ka, you, sir. O, oh, diba? So, yan. Yan, yung, yan lang yung risk. But actually, in practice, we cannot avoid encountering entities that allows for open credit transaction. Yan yung accounts receivable. Okay? Uh, open, uh, tawag nun, Trading activities, credit sales revenue, actually may also involve the receipt of promissory note. But seldom lang kasi yung promissory note. Okay? Uh, seldom lang siya. Usually yung promissory note, the, the, invo the, the involvement of promissory note are in big, uh, yeah, huge amount of debt na. Uh, for small debts like yung open credit transaction with customers, Rare lang yan. Although it may occur. Okay? Although it may, it may occur. But nowadays, nagiging, nagiging ano siya, nagiging practice uh, for purposes of natural obligation na rin. And parang ano, parang to establish good relationship with suppliers. Yun yung ginagawa na lang ng mga customers. But we can, again, we can still avoid, we can still avoid na merong open credit na accounts receivable talaga. Okay? So, yun yung example ko. Now, characteristics of an account receivable, just like with all other receivables, it is a financial asset as provided by P, uh, by IFRS 9 or PFRS 9. To be more specific, it is an amortized cost financial asset. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. And then, it is from open credit transactions with customers. Ibig sabihin, more like of a word of mouth. Diba? Word of mouth. But it does not necessarily mean a word of mouth lang talaga. Actually, our, when we say uh, open credit with customers, meron naman talaga tayong evidence. Yun nga lang, not that strong because the, the customer uh, can still deny such evidence. Okay? In relation to that, uh, usually, Accounts receivable are unsecured type of receivable. So no collateral. We don't have collateral. We don't have security for that. The only thing that we can say as an evidence is the invoice. Are you familiar with sales invoice? For those who have gone shopping, di ba yung mahabang, ano, mahabang tawag doon, paper na binibigay ng cashier? The same invoice is being issued for accounts receivable. It is actually the, the most common term for that invoice is the billing statement. Okay? Billing statement. Yan. Yun lang yung meron tayo. But still, again, the, the customer can still deny na meron silang uh, payable sa you. Okay? Yun yung risk with accounts receivable. And the accounts receivable, they are usually related to trading activities. Yan. So if you are uh, selling your goods or 
uh, providing services, accounts receivable may arise to that uh, transactions. Okay? So, yan ha. Accounting measurement. So, for accounting measurement, we initially uh, measure our accounts receivable at face value. The face value is regarded as the original invoice price at the date of transaction. Okay, the transaction that we are referring to here is the credit sale or the sale on account. Now, how does uh don? How does receivable arise in a in in, a, in an example scenario? So, for example, uh don, a repair shop. Okay, someone asked for the service of repairing computer. Sabi nang natin na computer repair shop. Walang pambayad yung client. So yung gagawin na lang, the service provider will um, prepare the billing statement. Then the billing statement will be issued uh, with a copy. Okay, may copy si, sell, uh, si service provide, provider at meron din copy si uh, client. Okay? Yung original invoice price is the total billing found at the bottom of the billing statement or of the invoice. Yung naka-highlight or naka-bold amount or yung naka-capitalize pa, yung total amount, billing, ganyan-ganyan, inclusive of taxes, eh, whatsoever. Basta yung total billing na nasa baba, yun yung tinatawag na original invoice price for accounts receivable. Yun yung ating pinaka-initial measurement. Okay? But for subsequent measurement, uh, the same with other type of receivables, in fact, all receivables are measured at amortized cost. As we have uh, learned uh, yesterday for the subsequent measurement for receivables. But for uh, to be specific, for accounts receivable, the amortized cost is regarded to as re a net realizable value or NRV. Okay? Almost the same pattern lang. We, have, uh, we, we only have a specific terminology to be used for the amortized cost for accounts receivable. So amortized cost or net realizable value for accounts receivable simply means the original invoice price after considering deducting credit collections, allowances for uncollectability, and other adjustments such as write-off due to worthlessness. We have a separate discussion for allowance for uncollectability and write-off. We are actually referring therefore uh, bad debts or yung mga doubtful accounts. Usually, bad debts and doubtful accounts are uh, commonly discussed under this topic, accounts receivable. But uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that accounts receivable, uh, yun lang yung merong uh, tawag nun, uh, doubtful or bad debts. Ganun, doubtful or bad debt accounts. Right? So yan. That is our accounting measurement. Don't forget about that. When I say initial measurement, face value as the original invoice price. Subsequent measurement, uh, amortized cost at net realizable value. Now, before I forget, uh, the reason why we uh, account for the initial measurement of accounts receivable as face value, which is the original invoice price, face, face value should mean that accounts receivable are regarded as short-term receivables actually. Because the perspective for accounts receivable is that they are realizable within one year. Although, uh, uh, sometimes in problem solving, uh, problems will tell you that this accounts receivable has been long outstanding for how many years na, but still uh, we consider it at short term. The reason for being a short term the accounts receivable has no maturity. Uh, maturity period or maturity date. Reason for having no maturity date uh, being arising from open credit. So anytime lang, the customer can pay. Yung parang ano, if you have already the obligation or obligation, of, obligation and contracts na law subject, yung parang sinasabing when my means permit me to do so. Diba? Kung kailan lang ako may kakayahang magbayad, doon ako magbabayad. Yun yung risk for accounts receivable. Diba? Ganyan din yung mga customers nyo. 
sa mga sa so mga tindahan diyan. Diba? Seldom lang. Seldom lang yung nagbabayad on time or before or ahead of the agreed period. Diba? So, I hope you can relate with that. Sabi ay ganit ni Sandra, opo sir. Sabi din ni Joshua, opo sir. Diba? Relate na relate talaga tayo dyan. So, yan ha. Don't forget with accounting measurement. That applies also. Yung mga examples ko, uh, common examples lang yan at the, the lower level. But in accounting level, they, uh, somewhat they apply. Okay, may mga customers kasi. When we refer for the accounting of receivables, we, has, we must put ourselves in the perspective of seller and buyer. Kasi ganun naman yun. Seller or buyer or supplier and buyer. Ganun. Uh, in practice kasi, we cannot avoid that, um, tawag nun, a specific a specific company will have one or more a two or more rather several suppliers lalo na yung mga manufacturing entities and merchandising entities may mga supplier diyan sila okay so ito yung example ng invoice invoice may differ from one supplier to another so uh, the amount I mean, the portion that I'm referring to earlier where we can find the, uh, the amount to be regarded as the original invoice price is the total, uh, the total due there. The amount that is found on that portion, the total due. Sales invoice on, uh, uh, on your part, uh, it is a billing to your customer. The amount provided there in the total due is your accounts receivable as a seller. Okay? But for the buyer, it is an accounts payable. So therefore, an accounts receivable of the seller is accounts payable of the buyer. Okay. So we are accounting for a, sim a, a, a single figure. Sabi na lang natin, yung total due dyan is uh, 10,000. That 10,000 is an accounts receivable of the seller, but an accounts payable of the buyer. Accounts receivable of seller, accounts payable of the buyer. Okay? So to recognize our accounts receivable for accounting purposes, we debit accounts receivable and credit sales or sales revenue. If you can still remember your merchandising, um, merchandising activity or topic, under your basic accounting, okay. uh, we have several transactions that we are uh, providing with journal entries. We're asked to prepare journal entries. Now, examples of those entries, uh, we have a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to sales or sales revenue. Now, there are different types of sales revenue. It depends on what type of uh, transaction. Is it a cash sale revenue credit sale revenue or whatsoever. How do we know if a sales revenue is a on a cash basis? Simply observe the debited account. If it is cash or cash in bank, then it simply means in a cash basis transaction. But for a credit basis transaction, our debit is no receivable, commonly no receivable. Although uh, no receivable could be debited, yung titignan na lang natin yung yung tawag na yung description okay yung description we can consider it as sales revenue from customers if the notes receivable debited should it be a notes receivable uh yung description is coming from customers but usually yeah, a credit sale transaction our debit is accounts receivable now having that entry we analyze that accounts receivable is part of the current assets of the statement of financial position or the balance sheet. While the sales or the sales revenue uh, is the first line revenue item of the profit or loss or income statement. Okay, profit or loss or income statement. Now, in relation to the competition of the uh, uh, ending balance for our accounts receivable, yeah. So we have to 
uh, carefully analyze the T accounts. Actually, I just presented two T accounts, but they are just actually the same when it comes to uh, application. Almost the same. The only difference is on uh, the inclusion or the incorporation of the recoveries. Okay, the recoveries. So we're going to uh, discuss more recoveries of previously written off accounts, write-offs, and bad debts when you proceed with bad debts or doubtful accounts na discussion. Mga siguro next year na yan. Okay? So to explain the first T account, on the debit side, we have the beginning balance. Okay? okay uh, we are here on the first T, uh, T account, ha? the top T account. So we have the beginning balance, credit sale, and uh, recoveries. So should there any uh, beginning balance, we we normally post it at the debit side because accounts receivable as an asset has a normal balance of debit. Now, you might be confused because credit sale is a revenue account and an, a revenue account has normal, normal balance of a credit. Why is it that for purposes of the account, it is provided on the debit side of accounts receivable? The reason is what we are um, tawag nito? what we are analyzing is the account of accounts receivable. So there are, we are referring with the asset. So that means uh, by describing it as credit sale, we mean that there is a, a transaction that involves for the arising of the accounts receivable, which is yan yan, yung credit sale. Kaya nasa debit, debit side siya. Then for recoveries, recoveries are actually, uh, we can say recoveries are miraculous. Miraculous uh, collection or recovery of previously uh, worthless account. When we say worthless, we, we determine already na uh, the customer will no longer pay. An example, example ha, ng concept ng write-off. Although we'll discuss write-off more when we proceed with bad debts or doubtful accounts. Ganito lang, a small glimpse lang. Yung write-off, di ba, for those who have a uh, sari-sari store, uh, di ba, may mga uh, you have experience that uh, uh, among your customers, di ba, you, you already have notations na, ah, uh, this customer, I have an experience of this customer of uh, nagbabayad siya mga ilang taon muna bago maka magkapagbayad or ilang buwan muna bago makabayad. Diba? Walang problema sa mga loyal customers. Diba? Yung nagbabayad talaga. Umihili yung buy. Doon tayo may duda sa mga uh, hindi nagbabayad. Doubtful or allowance could be uh, set up for those customers na meron tayong duda. But what about for those na sigurado tayong hindi magbabayad? Okay? Diba? For example, yung nagyulanda. You cannot expect your customers to pay you kasi lahat tayo niyan at a zero base. Walang pambayad, walang pera. Kahit na pera, ano pang bibilhin? Anong kwenta kahit magbayad si customer? Di ba wala? Kasi wala namang bibilhin ng mga time na yon. So, on the perspective of the seller, the seller will, will forgo the utang. So therefore, yung, yung nasa list natin, gagawin nating right off. Kasi hindi naman talaga yan nakukulit. Sa perspective kasi ni seller, parang nakakahiya naman na singilin pa sila on their utang. Di ba? So, nung yung mga uh, utang ng mga customers sa isang sari-sari store, uh, after Yolanda, they are immediately uh, right off. Now, uh, what if, uh, how many years na nakalipas si Yolanda? No? O, sabihin natin, uh, after two years nung nag-Yolanda, one of your customer biglang nagbayad, nakaalala. Parang siguro nabagok, nakaalala na nag-amnesia na tapos nabagok, naalala na may utang sa'yo, nagbayad. Parang out of nowhere. nowhere. Parang ano naman yun, hyperbolic na, ano, na example. But hindi natin alam. Kasi nga, recoveries are miracul somewhat miraculous kasi in nature. Na parang uh, having an account receivable, pay, uh, the, the obligation of someone who has a liability to you, pag, pag lumagpas na kasi yung uh, uh, significant or substantial period of time na hindi pa siya nagbabayad, uh, it is already become a natural obligation of someone to pay you. 
di ba? For example, yung friend natin na hindi nagpakita for how many years because of sa malaking utang niya. Tapos biglang nagparamdam kasi daw magbabayad. Oh, miraculous. Sana all magbabayad. Di ba? Parang out of nowhere, uh, yung ano na yan, uh, yung, yung responsibility niya to pay is not a natural obligation on, on the part of that customer. Okay? Parang ganun yung example. Kung meron kayong senaryo na ganyan, it is an example of recovery. Matagal ng utang, nakalimutan mo na, but still, the customer able to pay. Okay? Out of nowhere. Yun yung recoveries. So recoveries, the, the life cycle of a recovery of a previously accounts, a previously written off accounts, uh, it starts from being worthless. Therefore, it undergoes write-off. Then after write-off, out of nowhere, we recover that previously written off accounts. Okay? Then after considering all the debits and all the credits, we total the debits, we total the credits. Then any, any difference will be the squeezed figure or squeezed amount. On that purpose, about uh, what we're going to... Uh, squeeze out is the ending balance of accounts receivable we only put for that for 40 or 40 account purposes we only put ending balance of accounts receivable on the credit side to uh non to uh equate or to put into agreement yung total debits and credits so in our perspective since the total debits naman yung complete no, no matter what is the amount of the total debits, we assume that it must be the amount of the total credits. Kasi yun naman dapat. Total debits must equal total credits. So, uh, working back, kung i-working, kung i-work back natin from total credits, i-minus natin lahat yung collections, yung credit memos, debit me uh, credit memos for freight costs and sales return, right and then write off, we can arrive with the ending balance. Okay? Now, on the credit side naman, yung collections may include recoveries. For purposes of the account, of accounts receivable, collections may, should be carefully analyzed. On that purpose, I include recoveries because we have posted recoveries amount under the debit, uh, debit side of the T account. So, ano yung, ano yung, ano dyan? Ano yung tawag niyan? Logic. Now, if we uh, if we post on the debit side the amount of recoveries, we must also post as part of the collection the amount of recoveries. Reason because both, uh, I mean the recoveries has both impact on the debiting of accounts receivable and subsequently crediting it due to collections. Recoveries are in the form of collections okay so, yan. so if you have uh if you encounter recoveries for purposes of accounts receivable if you wish to present it on the debit side i advise you to include it as part of the of the collections on the credit side okay on the credit side so we can say that recover recoveries uh have no effect to the account receivable account Okay, that explains why the second T account, we don't have a recoveries on the debit side and the collections on the credit side excludes, okay, excludes the recoveries amount. Okay, kaya yung term dyan, no? on the second T account, collections excluding recoveries. But on the first T account, we have recoveries on the debit side, but we have collections which includes recoveries on the credit side. Okay? Can you still follow up to that point? Can you, can you raise hand? Okay. So next, we proceed with credit memos, the one with uh, freight cost and sales returns.
So for credit memos, for freight costs, what does it mean by credit memos? Credit memos are uh, intentional. Uh, I'm not sure if the term intentional is appropriate, but it is the uh, intentional uh, proper term. Intentionally decreasing the amount of um, the accounts receivable from that customer. So freight cost, freight charges or shipping charges or shipping cost. Who among you here are familiar with uh, Shopee? Shopee and Lazada. Oh, wag yung sabi hindi kayo familiar ha. Yan. So yung mga familiar, mahilig yan mag online shopping. Okay, joke lang. Okay, so why did I ask for those who have those who are familiar? Okay. Uh, when we uh, okay, before we go with Lazada and and Shopee, who among you here are familiar with FOB shipping point and FOB destination? Yung ship FOB shipping terms. I have a uh, pardon. I'm pretty sure na it uh, you encountered it under your basic accounting or your fab M2. At least yung basic accounting na lang. Di ba sa merchandising siguro yon na mention yung FOB shipping point, FOB destination. Di ba yung concept na if under FOB FOB desti uh, FOB shipping point the one who shoulders the ano the one who shoulders the shipping cost or the freight cost is the buyer while under FOB destination the one who's responsible for the freight cost is the seller am i correct correct ba okay so I hope you can still remember talaga ha. So yun. Um, how do I relate it with Lazada and Shopee? Nga. Because when you shop online, it is uh, it's like a general rule that as a buyer, we shoulder the freight. Kaya nga, before we check out on Lazada or Shopee, we can see in, uh, in the billing statement na we have there the, quant the, the quantity amount then if we have voucher chart familiar sa voucher yung mga ano yung mga deductions di ba so meron ding vouchers for free shipping actually but i'm not advertising ha i'm not advertising yung Shopee and Lazada just making it an example okay yun nga pala nag 12 12 sila last last ano last sunday pero extended naman daw so yun nga when we check out uh, before we check out, may uh, merong billing statement. And on the bottom, far, bottom part, before the total amount, nandoon yung uh, delivery cost. Okay? As a buyer, we normally uh, shoulder the delivery cost. So, yung concept na yun could be um, associated with FOB shipping point. Kasi as a buyer, ikaw nga yung nag-shoulder. Okay? What about FOB destination? Where can we associate FOB destination? So, sige. Who among you here familiar with free shipping? La, uy. O, di ba? Yung mga nag-raise hand, mahilig yan sa sale. Mahilig yan mag-collect ng mga free shipping vouchers. Hi. So, yun. So, what happens when there is a free shipping? This is my explanation lang. I'm not saying that this is absolute, but this this could uh, this applies. This could apply. And I have a, uh, there's a great feeling, I have a great feeling that this really applies. Now, for free shipping, that means you do not, as a buyer, you do not um, shoulder the freight. 
but we all know when we when when we shop online uh the the goods will really be shipped it will be delivered to us so what now who will pay diba who will pay for the shipping of course it is the seller so kung mayroong free shipping nakaano ka lang na naligtas ka lang you're been marked safe for the payment of the uh, tawag nun, shipping cost or delivery cost. But as to the payment of the uh, car uh, to the carrier, si seller talagang mag uh, responsible kung free shipping. Doon pwedeng pumasok si FOB destination. Now, we go back with the concept of FOB shipping point and FOB destination. So, F FOB shipping point, again, the one who's responsible for the freight cost is the buyer. Under FOB destination, the one who's uh, uh, responsible for the freight cost is the seller. But there are instances. I hope you're able to encounter this one. There are instances that despite being FOB shipping point, that the buyer should have um, shouldered the freight it is the seller who shoulders the freight despite being FOB shipping point. Yung tawag doon is FOB shipping point freight prepaid. So I hope na mention yan. I, I hope lang. I hope lang. Kung hindi, no problem. Okay? Then under FOB destination, it should be the seller who is responsible for uh, payment of the freight but because uh, but sometimes it is the buyer who shoulders the freight yung tawag naman doon fob destination freight collect yung isa fob de, uh, fob shipping point freight prepaid at yung isa naman fob destination freight collect again ulitin ko fob destination uh, fob shipping point freight prepaid si si buyer sana ang responsible Pero, sinolder lang muna temporarily by the seller. FOB shipping point, dapat si buyer, freight prepaid, si seller muna ang nag-shoulder. Yun yun. Pangalawa, FOB destination, freight collect. Si seller sana, ang responsible, kaya nga FOB destination, but because freight collect, si buyer ang nag-shoulder. Okay? Nag-gets na ako doon. Nalilay saan? So now, how do we relate it with credit memos for freight cost? The question should be, or would be, when do credit memos for freight cost happen? or where or when or where do we uh, associate uh, credit memos for freight cost okay the answer is under fob destination freight collect okay freight collect sometimes the seller uh failed to uh, to pay or to shoulder the freight cost. So, as a result, or as a resort, yung ginagawa ni, ni seller is to contact the buyer to temporarily shoulder the freight. Then afterwards, the as a, as a reimbursement, the seller will say, uh, instead of paying the entire amount of the account receivable, I will charge that account decrease of the credit memo that I'm going to issue because of shouldering the freight. So, babawasan yung total account receivable from customer by the amount of the freight cost shouldered by that customer. Yun yung idea why we have a credit memos for freight cost. Kaya siya termed as credit memos because against or charged against the account receivable. Account receivable is normally debit while credit memos are contra debit transactions. Okay? So, I hope na gets na ako doon, ha? Next, we have 
uh, credit memos for sales return. Now, uh, sometimes customers um, nagsasauli, make sales uh, sales return. Nagsasauli na mga uh, binibili nila. It is true also for sari-sari stores. Di ba nga, kung nagkakamali ng bili o nagsasobra yung bili, nasabihin sa'yo, ah, kuya or ate, sobra pala yung nabili ko, pinapabalik na lang ni mama. Hehehe. O minsan ma naman nagkakamali. Sabihin, ah, ah, ate or kuya, ano, ah, wag na lang daw, pinapasauli na lang ni mama. Di ba gano, nakarelate? May mga, may mga senaryo bang ganyan? May mga sari-sari store? O baka kayo talaga yung inuutusan sa ano, mga parents yung bumili tapos pinapasauli. So yun yung example ng sales return. Diba? So yan. So yung actual sales return, the credit memos for sales return are actual returns. So kung allowance pa lang yan, we don't have uh, a, 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 an immediate deduction. Yung mayroon lang immediate deduction sa accounts receivable is the credit memos. Pag may credit memos na tayo. Okay? Ibig sabihin lang guys ng credit memos to decrease the accounts receivable. Yan lang. Kaya siya nakakredit. Then write-off. Yung write-off naman, we have it as yung ano, worthless. Worthless accounts. As I have uh, told you as an example earlier, Yung mga customers na hindi na talaga, hindi na nagbabayad. Okay? Yung sure na sure ka talaga na hindi magbabayad. Yun yun sila. Right off na yan. Okay? So yan. Yan yung composition ng ating T-account. Yung difference lang ng first T-account and the second T-account is the presence of the recoveries. When we include recoveries on the debit, we also include the same amount as part of the collections. When we exclude from the de uh, from the debits, we exclude the same amount as as uh, from the collections. Okay. Now for the computation of our net realizable value, we start with the ending balance of accounts receivable, assuming we have already computed the correct amount of ending balance of accounts receivable. We deduct from that ending balance the uh, allowances for uncollectibility. The, uh, the four types of allowances that we can have is the freight cost, sales discount, sales return, and doubtful accounts or bad debts. The most common of the four are the sales return and doubtful accounts. Seldom lang si freight cost and sales discount. Sometimes kasi si sales discount are availed at the moment of uh purchase. Or sometimes sell, uh, buyers uh, pay within the discount period. So uh, setting up allowance for sales discount sometimes are no longer necessary. The same with freight cost. But sometimes during, uh, especially if we are already at the end of the year, uh, meron na tayong financial reporting, any anticipation or expectations for Freight cost and sales discount, uh, sales return and doubtful accounts. Will uh, we need to set up, tawag non allowances uh, at the end of the year. So after deducting those four uh, allowances, we can come up now with the amortized cost or the net realizable value of our accounts receivable. Okay. So again, yung most common jan yung dalawa sales return and doubtful accounts. Although I'm not saying na this freight cost and sales discount could not occur. Okay. Sometimes uh, problems involved for freight cost and sales discounts. Whew. So yeah, let us have this example. So high-speed company reported uh, total sales of 4 million for 2020. So the following amounts were reported at the end of December 31, 2020. We're provided with accounts receivable, pero yung present na amount is beginning balance na 700,000. Okay? Recoveries from previously written off accounts, 
10,000, meaning in the previous period, we already have uh, made write-off. But out of those written-off accounts, uh, miraculously, we made recoveries. So, yung 10,000 na yan. It has an impact on the journal entries, on the recording. But as to effect on the T account, it may or may not be considered. Then, uh, accounts written off during, uh, during the year, we have 30,000. So, referring only for the current year, we have the written off accounts for 30,000. Credit memos for freight costs during the year, 15,000 in total. And credit memos for sales return during the year, also 25,000. Okay. Sales, uh, sales on account or credit sales is 82.5% of the total sales. So therefore, 82.5% uh, of the 4 million equates for the total credit sales. Okay? Then the excess will be the cash sales. The company made collections of 3,700,000 cash. Okay? So yung 3,700,000 yan, total cash collections yan, which includes recoveries. And uh, 700 of that 3,700,000, 700,000 of it, that uh, those cash collections are coming from cash sales. So therefore, if we're going to journalize our cash sale for 700,000, we debit cash and we credit uh, cash uh, sales revenue, rather. Debit cash and credit sales revenue of 700,000. Okay? So, sige, uh, how much is the sales on account or the credit sales? You can have it in the chat box. For those who have calculators, the calculator warriors. How much is our credit sales? 4 million times 82.5%. Magkano yan? Okay, so that's correct. Okay, that's correct. Uh, 3,300,000. So our total credit sales amounted to 3,300,000. Now, um, in order for us to correct that our cash sale or sales revenue coming from cash basis is really 700,000, we need to check by considering 4 million minus 3,300,000. Okay? So, as per computation, it's the same, 700,000. So, uh, we can verify that eight to, uh, that uh, 3,300,000 is in fact 82.5% of the total sales. Therefore, the 4 million includes both cash sale of 700,000 and total credit sales or sales on account of 3,300,000. Next, as of December 31, 2020, the company disclosed the following in relation to sales on account and uh, accounts receivable. Number one, the company failed to pay uh, the carrier for 22,000 shipment. Uh, 22,000 shipment cost for the finished goods sold to one of the customers on December 30, under FOB destination. Take note, the shipping term is FOB destination. We are responsible supposed to be. However, the, uh, the company failed to pay the carrier. Now, for that purpose, the resort of the carrier is to, uh, tawag nito? to run after the buyer for the freight cost. Okay? Yan yung magiging scenario dyan. 
the customer was contacted to shoulder the shipment. So, kinontact ng, cost, uh, ng company yung sell, uh, yung ano, yung buyer to temporarily shoulder the shipment. And as a resort, reimbursement should be through charging against the amount collectible. The customer has no response yet. Okay, so in, uh, the customer had uh, no response, so meaning no confirmation yet if the customers have reimbursed, I mean reimbursed, have shouldered rather, shouldered the freight. So if we're going to journalize this one, uh, the first and uh, the first transaction for freight cost, we may debit freight out or delivery expense or delivery cost. Okay, meaning we are recognizing an expense on our part as a seller. But our credit, since the, uh, there's no uh, confirmation yet of the shouldering of the freight cost by the buyer, we set up an allowance that uh, we are anticipating that, yes, the buyer may uh, shoulder, okay, may agree in shouldering the freight. So we credit allowance for freight cost or freight charges. So how does number one transaction or additional information differ from the credit memos of uh, for freight cost during the year of 15,000? Okay. The only difference of the 15,000 credit memo for freight cost and the freight cost that was not paid to the carrier under FOB destination is only on the journal entry. Both are still debited to freight cost. Okay? However, for credit memos, uh, for, for the freight cost that had been issued for credit memos already, our credit is accounts receivable. Kasi uh, we are immediately deducting the amount of accounts receivable for that uh, specific customer because of the credit memo. So therefore, credit memo, uh, connotation niya is there is an actual okay? actual shouldering of the freight cost by the buyer. Yung number, yung number one additional information is only referring to the allowance. So therefore, we're not going to deduct immediately the 22,000. Instead, 22,000 is helpful for NRV or for amortized cost. But for the credit memos, importante siya for the balance or ending balance of the accounts receivable. Next. Ah, by the way, nag-gets ako doon. Kylie Ray's hand. Okay. So next, number two, the company is still expecting. So the phrase there is still expecting. 45,000 sold finished goods will be returned uh, returned by the customers. So we are anticipating of returns, a uh, sales return from customers. So no actual returns yet. So if we're going to journalize number two, we must debit sales returns and credit allowance for sales returns. Minsan, yung, yung debit natin dyan is sales returns and allowances or sales allowances. Sales allowances are actually referring also for returns. Okay? Returns. Sometimes we debit both sales return and allowances account or simply sales returns or, sale, or simply sales allowances. Okay? But how this number two differs from the credit memos of sales return, the 25,000. The 25,000 is essential for the competition of the ending balance of accounts receivable. Because of the term credit memos, that means may actual sales return. Pero yung number 2 dito na 45,000, wala pang actual sales return dyan. We are anticipating na magkakaroon ng sales return. Actually, the sales return for purposes of allowance setting up is a, is a sales return allowance or sales allowance account. Okay. Then, 
Uh, if we're going to journalize pala yung 25,000 uh, with debit, sales return, and credit accounts receivable kasi may actual return na yun. Next, uh, the company is still expecting that out of 150,000 cash discounts offered, 50,000 will still be availed by the customers. So, ibig sabihin ng uh, number three, we have offered 150,000 cash discounts to customers. But uh, out of those 150,000, we are still expecting that 50,000 will still be availed by the customers themselves. Okay? So for journal entries, we're not going to consider the entire 150,000, but the 50,000 only. So we debit uh, sales discount or sales discount allowances, then credit allowance for sales discount. Okay? So yun, for 50,000. Then last number four, based on reasonable and supporting forward-looking information, supportable pala, supportable, uh, forward-looking information, the company is required to set up an allowance for doubtful accounts or referring naman tayo for bad debts. So based on amounts on all accounts receivable. Based on gross amounts on all accounts receivable. So we debit doubtful accounts expense or bad debt expense and credit allowance for bad debts or doubtful accounts. For 120,000. So our requirements, we have compute the balance or ending balance of accounts receivable. Compute the net realizable value of accounts receivable and prepare the required journal entries to set up all the allowances. Okay, yung allowances lang naman, meaning yung one to four allowances. So for our solution, correct yung competition natin kanina for the credit sales. So total sales, less cash sales, kasi yan lang pa lang naman yung other uh, sales revenue na present. So difference is the credit sales at 3,300,000. We can either analyze this one or this one. They're just correct. Both are correct. Now for the T accounts, uh, we simply explain lang uh, for the beginning balance, yung 700,000, ito, ito yan, on the debit side. Then the credit sales, we have it earlier, the 3,300,000. So therefore, if we're going to journalize, debit tire ng accounts receivable, 3,300,000, and credit uh, sales revenue, 3,300,000. But because accounts receivable yung ina-analyze, uh, it should be described as credit sale, the transaction that costs for the arising of accounts receivable. Then we have also posted the recoveries of 10,000 on the debit side. Since we have posted recoveries 10,000 on this debit side, it must uh, only uh, proper that these 3 million collections should mean na merong recoveries yan. Okay? So balikan natin ang problem. The problem provides that the company made cash collections of 3,700,000 including recoveries. So yung entire 3,700,000 kasama daw yung recoveries. But of which out of the 3,700,000, 700,000 was coming from cash sale. So if I'm going to ask you, magkano yung ating credit collections or collections coming from accounts receivable. Magkano yan? Out of cash collections, the 3,700,000, cash, cash sale daw yung 700,000. Okay? Cash sale collection. If magkano naman yung cash from credit transaction? Magkano? 3,700,000 minus 700,000. Magkano yan?
Okay. So that is correct. It's 3 million. So 3 million. Kaya meron tayong 3 million on our solution on the credit side. Okay? So we assume that the 3 million includes collection with recoveries. Okay? Then for the credit memos for freight cost, we have 15,000 on the credit side. Credit memos for sales return, the same, 25,000. Then the write-off of 30,000 is on the credit side. So total debits is 4,010,000. We assume the same figure for the total credits. Okay, 4,010,000. 4, then from 4,010,000, we work back to arrive at the ending balance. So 4 million minus 3 million minus 15,000 minus 25,000 minus 30,000. That should equate to 940,000 ending balance. So yan na yung sagot natin, yung ending balance. It is only again posted on the credit side to arrive with the uh, total debits and total credits. Okay? Ito lang yung in-squeeze out natin. Okay? Ito lang yung in-squeeze out. If you use this analysis of 40 account, good for you. I suggest this one kasi ito yung uh, pinaka-conceptual uh, concept-wise. But for advanced purposes, we can ignore recoveries on the debit side. But at the same time, if we ignore recoveries on the debit side, we must consider that the collection should exclude also recoveries. That's why from 3 million naging 2 million 990,000 na lang dito. Still the same, we have credit memos for freight costs and sales return and write off. Assuming everything else is correct, okay? Total debits is 4 million, so the same amount will be uh, assumed for total credits. Work it back using the uh, credited amounts, uh, we can still arrive with the same amount of 940,000. Okay? So, sige nga, kindly verify if it is correct 940,000. Sige, calculator warriors. Verify. Okay. So for those who are able to verify it correctly, uh, that's uh, that's nice of you. Okay, so we already have answered for number one, that is 940,000. Now for number two, the net realizable value, the amortized cost, from the 940,000, we deduct all the allowances. So in relation with the requirement three, the journal entries, for freight charges, we have here an allowance, uh, 22,000, okay? We set up an allowance, we are not yet deducting it from the T account. Rather, when we deduct natin is the 15,000 kasi siya yung may ano, effect na sa T account. The same goes with the sales return of 45,000. We set up an allowance for purposes of NRV, but yung credit memos, essential siya dito sa T account. Then the sales discount uh, allowance of 50,000 deduct. Then also the most common, uh, we have the doubtful accounts, yung 120,000. So all in, uh, as a net amount, we arrived with 703,000 uh, net realizable value. So this represents already the amortized cost for accounts receivable. Okay, nuggets? Any reason?
Okay. So we move forward with accounting for credit sales. Okay, accounting for credit sales. So there are three types of sales transactions or sales contracts. We can have cash sales, we can have credit sales, and advanced cash payment sales. So how do you differentiate all those type of sales? Cash sales by the name itself, cash sale is a sale with the requisite of cash from customers. Okay? Example, sa sari-sari store, uh, when a customer uh, paid you cash for the uh, for the goods purchased sa sari-sari store, yung tawag doon is cash sale. Okay? Because you received immediately cash. Okay? So, no further explanations to that. Yan yung pinaka-basic na type of sale, yung cash sale. Okay? Next, we have credit sale. A credit sale is a sale in which there is no full cash payment made by the customer at the date of sale transaction. A credit sale is the transaction wherein we can relate the arising of trade receivables. Either account or notes receivable, but again, yung common dyan sa dalawa is the accounts receivable. Okay? The scenario is the amount of the balance will be paid at a later date. Now, how do we relate it with the sari sari store? Yun nga, pag may umutang. Sometimes, uh, the customers merong cash pero kulang yung cash na dala. Kaya nga yung statement ko dyan, no full cash payment. So therefore, dalawang pwedeng scenario, two scenarios could either be uh, the, the customer is short of cash, so therefore the customer will pay the amount of cash, yung aabutan lang ng cash na yon, then the excess of the balance will be made in utang. So, yun yung magiging accounts receivable, yung balance. However, on the other side, pwede rin the entire amount of the purchase will be regarded as utang. So, yung talagang, wala talagang cash na dinala dun sa store. Yun yung credit scene. You allow uh, utang to customers or extend credit to customers for the purchased goods or services. Then we have yung advanced cash payment sale. Si advanced cash payment sale, iba naman siya, uh, the same with a uh, cash sale, there is a receipt of cash. But in contrast with cash sale, walang simultaneous, there is no simultaneous uh, rendering of service or delivery of the goods at the moment of the sale. Okay. Anong example ng advanced cash payment sale? So let's uh, let's compare cash sale, credit sale, and advanced cash payment sale uh, sa bakery, uh, sa baking ano, establishment. Sabi na lang natin, not advertising, kay, ano, kay quality bread. <laughs> Ganon kasi yung example kay ng morning. So kay quality bread. If you go to quality bread, if you purchase uh, breads, like for example, uh, tawag nun, uh, sliced bread, or sabihin na lang natin you purchase a cake, di ba? The moment you purchase the cake, nagbayad ka ng cash, tawag doon cash sale. Di ba? Cash sale ang tawag doon. Now, for credit sale, if, if ano, if, um, uh, quality bread allows you for credit, okay, umuutang ka, uh, you were able to purchase a cake through credit or utang, or sabi na lang natin nag-swipe ka ng credit card. Char. O credit card. Sa credit card, guys, yung idea, utang talaga yan. Utang, yan, nag-swipe ka. So, or sabi na lang natin, pinangutang ka lang talaga ni quality bread. Hindi ka pinagbayad muna ng cash. Kasi nang nagmakaawa ka, you, you need the cake. Kasi gutom ka na. So, binigay sa'yo yung cake. So, yung tawag doon, credit sale. Kasi pinangutang ka. Or baby, uh, you paid an amount as a down payment, but the excess, yun yung utang. Doon mag-aarise portion of it, credit sale. In whole or in part, pwede yun credit sale. But what about advance cash payment sale? Yung idea ni advance cash payment sale, for example, si Quality Bread uh, will will ano, will accept a special 
order for cakes. Di ba? Tatawag ka kay ano? Kay, kay quality bread. Or pupunta ka kay quality bread. Sabihin mo, uh, Ma'am, sir, I want to order a specialized cake for ma for the birthday of my, sabihin na lang natin, mother. Okay? Or my sister, brother. Ganon. Okay? Sa ano pa yung birthday niya? Sa 31st of the month. Parang ganon. Example. So, nag-advance cash payment ka. So, when you paid the advance cash payment, hindi pa naman i-deliver sa'yo yung cake eh. Kasi specialized nga gagawin pa yung cake. So, advance cash payment sale, magiging correct, uh, I mean, perfected sale lang siya kapag yung uh, delivery ng cake happens. Okay? Nai-deliver na sa'yo yung cake. So, therefore, yung cash sale at saka yung credit sale, perfected sale agad yun at the moment of transaction. Even though si credit sale, utang. But for advanced cash payment sale, it does not necessarily mean na perfect sale na siya because of advanced cash payment. Kaya nga, uh, may delay sa delivery. Or sa service provider naman, may, may delay sa rendering ng service. So, so yun si advanced cash payment sale. Nagbigay ka agad ng cash payment but no simultaneous delivery of goods or rendering of the service. Na picture out guys. Kindly raise hand. You can also imagine it with your ano with if you are no if you are kung merong mga events, di ba? And you are making advance orders to your suppliers. Ganyan. At aga-apply din yung uh, advance cash payment sale. Diba? So, okay. Mm -hmm. So, in uh, among those three types of sale, si accounts receivable nag sa credit sale. So, si credit sale yung pinaka-main uh, transaction uh, for the rising of trade receivables. By the way, guys, medyo mag-extend tayo ng konti lang naman, ha? Konti lang naman. So, yan. So, we have to broaden our competition for our credit sale. So, this time, credit sale, competition is from total sale, uh, deduct cash sale, and in addition to that, we deduct advanced cash payment sales if that cash that advanced cash payment sale uh, are included to total sales amount okay if included pero kung the, uh, if the problem provides that the total sale does not include advanced cash payment sale because we are recognizing yung tinatawag na accrual basis advanced cash payment sale guys violates adva uh, uh, some uh, somewhat violates si accrual basis. Kung pagbabasihan lang natin yung receipt ng cash. Okay? So, uh, kung hindi naka-include yung advance cash payment sale, then ignore na lang yung amount na yan. Okay? Kaya ang meron akong description dyan, advance cash payment sale, ibawas if included. Okay? So, from that, we can arrive the credit sales. Okay? So, credit sales may be accounted for under the following methods. So, in discussion materials and other reference materials, you can have it there, gross method and net method. The only difference of the gross method and net method is on the journal entries being prepared for credit sale and all other uh, transactions that will relate for uh, that credit sale, the collections or the recording of the cash or sales discount. Okay? So for gross, uh, for gross method, the recording of the... Uh, wait lang guys, uh, for, a for a moment lang.
Okay, so going back, uh, credit sales may be accounted for under the gross method, either the gross method or the net method. The idea of the gross method is to record credit sales uh, during the transaction date at an amount before deducting cash discount. So kung meron tayong in-offer na cash discount, under gross method, we do not deduct yet the cash discount from the sale, from the credit sales. Okay? But under net method, the credit sales are recorded after, okay, are recorded at an amount after deducting any cash discounts. Okay? So ito lang tandaan. Gross method before cash discount. Net method after cash discount. So yan. Take note of that. So summary journal entries for the differences of a gross method and net method. As you can see, under gross method, the recording of the credit sale is a debit to accounts receivable and sales revenue. The same account will be re, uh, debited and credited under net method. The only difference is that the amount for gross method is really the entire amount. Okay, Gross amount meaning before deducting uh, cash discount or sales discount. But under net method, we, uh, we immediately deduct the sales dis uh, the yeah, sales discount or cash discount uh, for purposes of debiting accounts receivable and sales revenue. Then to record the collection, if the collection is within the discount period, meaning uh, 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 within the period wherein the the customers can still avail the cash discounts under gross method, uh, we took effect the collection by simply crediting accounts receivable at the entire amount or gross amount. However, because the customers are availing the discount, we debit sales discount. Sales discount is treated as a contra-revenue account. A contra-revenue account. And then, um, our debit to cash is the net amount of uh, the gross, uh, gross amount of collectibles minus the sales discount. So net amount na yung debit natin sa cash. But under net method, our debit to cash and accounts receivable is at a net amount. Reason why we do not have any uh, tawag nito, we don't have any uh, debit to sales discount is because sa moment pa lang ng ating recording uh, at tra transaction date, Accounts receivable has, uh, has been debited at a net amount. So that's why we credit accounts receivable still at a net amount. So that's why, uh, that's the reason also yung debit natin sa cash at a net amount, assuming lahat makokolekta. Uh, by the way, error lang to ha. This, uh, this one should have been in, the, uh, in line with the accounts receivable. Hindi ko lang na-correct, sorry. Basta na, dapat nasa task to. Next, what about if the collection is beyond discount period? Okay, beyond discount period or meaning beyond the dis, the, the period where in the and uh, the customers can avail uh, cash discount. So under gross method kapag beyond discount period na what do we do is to collect the entire amount. We expect to collect the entire Amount. So yung gross amount, yun yung in-expect natin na makokollect. But under net method, we debit cash at the gross amount because again, customers will not avail. But our credit to accounts receivable is at a net amount. Why net amount? Because initially we record it as a debit to a net amount. So how do we balance the, fig uh, the debits and credits? Our balancing figure is a sales discount for fitted account. Okay. So how do we differentiate sales discount for fitted account from the sales discount uh, nandito? It's under gross method. Okay. We cannot find sales discount for fitted account under gross method. And we cannot find sales discount account under net method. Take note of that. Okay. The sales discount for fitted account is actually a pro, uh, not a pro, a uh, an adjunct revenue account. Adjunct revenue account. While the sales discount is a contra revenue 
account. Kaya dinideduct natin si sales discount sa to, uh, sa total sales. Si sales discount forfeited naman other income account siya. Okay, other income account. Uh, last as an adjustment recording for forfeited discount if collections uh, had not been made even beyond the discount period or even beyond the collection period, what do we do under gross method is no journal entry. Why no journal entry? Because hindi naman tayo nagdididak immediately ng uh, cash discount. But under net method, our journal entry is to recognize as a debit account receivable and credit sales discount forfeited account for the amount of the cash discount unavailed or forfeited. Reason bakit tayo nag-debit ng accounts receivable is that parang ina-adjust natin si net method papuntang gross method. Reason of uncollections. Due to non-collections of accounts receivable beyond uh, discount period and because customers are no longer availing the cash discount okay, because of uh, the intention to pay beyond the discount period or beyond the collection period, what do we do is to uh, gross up the amount of our collectibles or our accounts receivable. So we, ano, binabalik natin yung binawas na sales discount. Kaya debit to accounts receivable. Okay? So let us have this example. High-speed company sold goods to customers on account, so meaning credit basis, amounting to amounting to 700,000 December 31 2020 20. the credit term is 5 uh, 15 and sorry and 30 ibig sabihin the customer can avail 5% cash discount if uh, payment is made within 15 days but beyond 15 days and within uh, 30 days, uh, no discount tayong ma-avail niya. Okay? So within 15 days lang yung availment ng 5%. The company is deciding whether to account the transaction under gross or net method. Uh, the accountant, accountant has been assigned to prepare the journal entries under both methods. So the requirements to prepare required journal entries for uh, recording the credit sale of 700,000 the receipt of payments from customers of 700, entire amount of 700,000 within 15 days. And for number three, receipt of payments of the entire 700,000 from customers, this time beyond 15 days, or we can say beyond 15 days, but within 30 days. Then last, uh, recording of forfeited cash discount if no payment from customers even after 30 days. Okay? So, ito yung, uh, by the way, by this information alone, magkano yung ating potential cash discount? 700,000 times 5%. Magkano yan? Okay, so that is correct. That's correct. So therefore, 35,000 is our potential uh, cash discounts. So yan, under gross method, as I have told you earlier, uh, that to record the sales revenue is to debit accounts receivable and sales revenue for 700,000, the entire amount of 700,000, meaning before deducting the 35,000 cash discount. But under net method, as you can see, we record it at 665,000. So really the difference is the 35,000. Then to record the collection within 15 days, meaning the customers availed the cash discount. Under net method, as you can see, we directly credit accounts receivable for 665,000. Then credit to a uh, debit to cash for 665,000. 
2000. That is a little different under um, gross method. Okay? As you can see, we don't have any sales discount debited here. Reason kasi nga discounts has already been deducted uh, from the first journal entry at December 30, at December 1 under net method. But for gross method, mapapansin nyo, accounts receivable of 7,000 na, 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 na nakadebit, credit natin siya for the entire amount of 700,000. Then we debit sales discount for the 35,000 cash discount. And the difference of two figures is the debit to cash of 665,000. Okay, this is the only time we, uh, we present an... Uh, a net amount under gross method if there is an availment of uh, cash discount. However, if the collection is be, uh, beyond 15 days or uh, but, uh, within 30 days pa, yung mangyayari, uh, under, net, uh, under gross method, the entire amount of 700,000 will be credited to accounts receivable and debited to cash. But under net method, cash will be debited full amount of 700,000 but accounts receivable will be at 665,000 still. Reason, because yun yung ating initial recording. Okay, yun yung initial recording. Then our balancing figure is through the sales discount forfeited account. Okay, this is a uh, other revenue account. This one is a contra revenue account. Okay? So 35,000. But assuming no payments have been made by the customers even beyond 30 days, the collection period, cross method will no longer have any adjusting entry for that. Reason why, we, and why no adjusting entry? Because sa uh, initial record natin, wala namang binawas na cash discount. Pero under net method, assuming ha, no payment, assuming no payment, our 665,000 will be grossed up by debiting accounts receivable to 35,000. So we are recognizing uh, as if we are grossing up or reconciling the net method to gross method. So adding 35,000 debit to accounts receivable, magiging 700 na rin yung uh, initial record natin. Then, credit tayo ng sales discount for T10. So, other income yung treatment dito. Okay? So, I guess that concludes our discussion for accounts receivable.